Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Accounting Information System. My name is Dr. Muhammad Azmi. Okay, so in this topic, uh, students should be able to understand what is AIS, should understand the AIS concept, should understand the role of accountant, and the difference of manual and computer-based transactions. So, let's get started. Alright, so the objectives of today's class is to define what is AIS, to know what is the objective of AIS, to know the role of accountant in AIS, to compare between manual and computer-based system, to introduce a little bit on risk exposure, and this is not in the syllabus by the way, but it is important for you guys, and introduction to control on CBIS or Computer Based Information System. First, the definition of AIS. So, when we talk about AIS, AIS is a unified structure within an entity such as a business that employ physical resources and other components to transform economic data into accounting information with the purpose of satisfying the information needs of a variety of users. It's quite lengthy, isn't it? It's very difficult to understand. It's very difficult to memorize. Okay? Please, don't memorize. Okay, it's uh, quite difficult if you want to like memorize and... Uh, uh, recall back the definition of AIS. So, uh, I I actually have a system to understand all the uh, information or definition uh, in any subject. That is, there should there should be a input, a process, and output. Okay, let's say a uh, definition of AIS is a unified structure within an entity such as a business firm that employ physical resources and other components to transform economic data. Okay, transform is process and all this thing is input. So what is the input? Okay, it's a collection, storage and processing of financial statement. So what is the output? The output should be the financial statement okay and this financial statement is shared by the user of financial statement obviously such as investor creditors and tax authorities okay let me uh, repeat okay the input is okay a storage a collection uh, we begin with collection uh, yeah? a collection a storage of raw financial statements okay and then it will be processed to become understandable financial statement to be used by user of financial statement such as investor creditor or authorities and uh, one more time the input is a collection of raw financial raw transaction that then process okay process to become financial statement to be used by internal or external user of financial statement okay so the internal uh, user are the managers, the employee, okay, for them to make a day-to-day -day, uh, decision making. The external, uh, external users are creditor, investor, authorities, and so on. Did you notice something? That each time when I uh, define EIS, there's a 
there's a, a little bit of difference. You know why? Because I did not memorize the definition, but I understand the definition. If you repeat my video, okay, you can find the similarity, which is input, process, and output. And they, this is how for you to uh, so-called memorize. It's not memorize, actually. It's understand a definition. Okay, it must be input, process, and output. And this output must be useful to other entity, okay, like internal and external user. Now you understand. Okay, let's continue with the next uh, objective. Yeah, objective of financial statement number one to support a day-to-day -day operation. What is day-to-day -day operation? Okay. It provides information to operation personnel to assist them in the efficient and effective discharge of daily tasks. For example, they want to make decision whether there is enough stock or not enough stock. Is there any, uh, what we call that, uh, uh, goods to be sent to the customer? To expect goods to be received from the supplier. And all these are day-to-day -day operation. Every day they need to make a decision and every day they need information. And this information, uh, whether it is financial or non-financial information, is very important for them to conduct the today operation. So AIS will help, will help them to smooth up things so that it become more manageable and more efficient. Okay, number one. Number two. To support decision making by internal decision makers. Okay, the information system supplies manager with the information they need to carry out their making. Sorry, uh, to carry out their decision making responsibility. Okay, so in other words, AIS will organize the information for them for the decision maker to make a, a better decision. Okay, if you have like a vague information, so you need to assume, you need to give decision based on your experience and so on. But if the the, the information that uh, the decision maker gets is good, okay, so decision uh, can be more accurate and more uh, less cost, should I say. Yeah. So number three, to fulfill obligation relating to stewardship function okay so stewardship is actually the responsibility of management to properly utilize the resources of the firm entrusted to them okay you must learn what is agency theory if you do not know what is agency theory is pause this video and then google what is agency theory Okay, by this time you know what is uh, stewardship or agency theory. Now, okay, so uh, what is uh, the obligation, uh, how they fulfill the obligation of uh, stewardship function? Okay, so the information system provides information about resources utilization to external user via traditional financial statement and other mandate reports it means that the ais help okay the agent uh, you should if you do uh, 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 don't know what i'm talking about meaning that you did not pause the video and look into the agency theory okay the agent and principal okay ais will help to smooth up communication between the agent and the principal so AIS is actually in between. So, the, the, what we call that, the obligation that the agent should fulfill, okay, become more and more transparent to the principal. And these principal are actually the, the shareholder of the firm, company, or business entity. Alright, so, that is the objective of AIS. Okay, so actually everything here is uh, discussed in the next slide. Eh? Uh, the, the first one, the second one, 
the third one right okay so what are the users of EIS I think you still remember your part one uh, part one accounting the user of financial statement so more or less it is the same uh, so I should skip this if you want to recall you can pause this video and then have a look into the uh, users of accounting information system is on uh, is is uh, you learn this you know this okay from part one right uh, let's proceed with benefit of having computerized AIS so the first one information can be prepared on time yes when we talk about technology technology is fast is accurate is on your fingertips okay so AIS will help them to speed up time okay speed up the report okay it become more real time it's not on batch system okay so we, uh, if you don't understand what is batch okay you can pause this video and have a look what is batch okay batch system multiple batch uh, yeah batch <laughs> okay and uh, number two produce more accurate and presentable presentable accounting information so that your accounting uh, uh, reporting will be more accurate and presentable meaning that is uh, consistent from month to month okay day to day and so on okay because you can set the the what we call that uh, set uh, you can have a setting you setting what you need for that reporting okay number three information can be assessed or retrieved quickly and timely okay I think uh, we discussed this in uh, point number one and in the long run it saves time and cost in the preparation and safekeeping of information okay bear in mind Okay, when we talk about information system, accounting information system, accounting software and whatnot, okay, the cost is expensive. Okay, the cheapest uh, accounting software uh, in market is um, around 2000, 1000, the cheapest one. And it can go to a couple of uh, thousand ringgit and also some of uh, which is uh, this uh, is more advanced system can cost uh, like uh, 13 and 15,000 ringgit but when we talk about the benefit in the long run it's actually save time and cost okay uh, so because of the all the all this benefit ah so you uh, ever you wondered what if we don't have this kind of computerized accounting <clears throat> i give you one example from my experience okay because we don't have this uh, so-called uh, timely integrated system so we have different addresses address yeah address alamat okay uh, from the sales department they have a latest address for the customer Okay, so our our accounting uh, department don't have that uh, that new address. So what happened was, okay, when we uh, instruct uh, our warehouse to send the goods to the customer, they send to the wrong address, and to make things worse, okay, the company the 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 the, the, the new tenant I know it's not tenant actually it's a uh, it's a uh, a new shop lah. It's also uh, selling the same product. Okay, almost lah, almost same product like the previous one. So they as they accept the 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 goods from us, and then suddenly what happened? <laughs> they deny everything. Okay, they deny everything. And it, it takes some time for us to get back our money. Okay, so that is the the what we call the disadvantage of not having computerized system and, and in such a we call it computerized EIS. Okay, okay. Next slide. The role of accountant. 
So the role of accountant uh, is RR. Uh, uh. As the end user, accountant must provide a clear picture of their need to design it on their system. Okay, uh, for your information, when we talk about the accounting system, the accounting software, it can be um, purchased or it can be custom made to us. So, uh, the accountant must always give suggestion, give a uh, idea to the designer of the system to suit them. Okay, in terms of everything, in terms of the friendliness, uh, user friendliness, in terms of uh, security, in terms of the the access and so on. Right. Next, uh, accountant as a designer. Okay. So, as a designer, the accountant should responsible for the conceptual uh, conceptual of the system. Okay, so they must advise the programmer to 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 what call that to to build the system according to what the what the accountant need. And finally, the accountant as system auditor. Okay. They must express their opinion on the company company system, okay, based on the the whatever control uh, that they have in the organization, the internal control, eh, in terms of uh, security and so on, so on. Okay, and other than that, <laughs> in terms of compliance, yeah, compliance to what? Compliance to obviously to whatever uh, standard that we have in our country. Okay, next. The accountants as information system user. I think this is the straightforward. Okay. Uh, so, oh, we discussed this. <laughs> okay. So, this slide is according to what we discussed just now. Okay. So, this one as a system user, as a system designer, and as an auditor. Right. You can pause and you can take down notes and whatnot. Okay, next the uh, and also in your manual, eh, actually, so you don't have to what call that um, uh, copy everything in your manual in your notes. It's not manual notes. You should call it notes. Okay, so next is comparison between manual versus computer based system. Okay, in terms of accounting records and processing. Okay, when we talk about accounting records. Okay, manual system. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, what call it? We have document, journal, and ledger, and computer-based system. We have master file, transaction reference file, and archive file. Okay, so uh, what is a uh, document? When we talk about document, there are three types of document. Okay, source document, product document, and turn around document. I believe we have uh, notes on it. Okay, yeah. So, source document. Source document used to capture and formalize transaction data need for transaction processing. Okay, uh, that is source document. And product document is the result of transaction processing. And turn around document is a product document of one system that becomes source document for another system. Okay, for example. Okay, when we, I talk about turnaround document, uh, I think you can understand uh, uh, the above. Alright, turnaround document, the best example to give on turnaround document is your electricity bills. Okay, the bill, okay, the bill, um, okay, I think I have a bill right here. Give me a minute, I try to find it. Okay, so this is a product document. Okay, product document. Okay, this document. Okay, it is it's a bill right, actually. Okay, is uh, to let me to let the customer know that we owe them hundred something dollars, hundred and seventy eight dollars. Okay, so when I bring this bill to Post Malaysia to pay. Uh, this is old, uh, old story. Now this uh, I pay online, but okay. To explain you what is turnaround document. 
when I bring this bill to Post Malaysia, okay, they will process this bill and cut this lower portion, okay, and keep the lower portion and send the upper portion uh, and give back the upper portion to me, okay. This lower portion will become a source document for their system. Uh, that's why we call it turnaround document. Okay. Let's uh, let me uh, let me what we call that repeat this. Okay. When they charge me this bill. This bill is actually a product document. Okay. When I receive this bill, this is source document for my expenses. Okay. When I bring this bill to the, what we call that, to the Post Malaysia. Okay. The Post Malaysia will, will tear down this uh, portion. And this portion will become source document for another department of the Tenaga National. Okay. Uh, that is what is defined as source document, product document and turn around document. Okay. Next slide. Okay. When we talk about computer files, there are generally four types of files. Okay, so the first one is master file. Master file generally contain account data. For example, the GL, the subsidiary file, the combination of all those files. Okay, when we talk about trans transaction file, it's, a, it's actually a temporary file containing transactions since the last update. Okay, and reference files contain relatively constant information used in, uh, in processing. For example, text, uh, text table, text figure, the customer address, and so on. So that we use the same file or the same data in the file over and over again. And the archive file. Archive file contains past transactions for reference purposes. Okay, so uh, for audit trails, okay, as you can see here, the source document Okay, is the first document that uh, uh, initiate in the audit trail. Okay, then this source document is posted to the journal, journal to GL, and this GL become financial statement. I believe that you learned this in part one. Okay, for computer based information system, okay, it begins. Uh, sorry, this is the audit trail. So for for uh, audit trail, okay, to detect uh, something, it begins with financial statement. Okay, for example, uh, the figure of accounts payable. Okay, and then it goes backward. Okay, look into the GL, look into the journal, and finally look into the document itself. For example, uh, the why uh, the, 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 the theory, uh, why the electricity bills is so high on uh, that year. So they look into the GL, general, and until the source document, the bill itself. Is it true for that month, the bill is so high and why? Okay, so they look back to the source document. So, accountants should be able to trace in both directions. Okay, and normally sampling and confirmation are two common techniques. Alright, next, accounting process. Okay, for manual, it has the source document, journal, ledger, trial ballot, and financial statement as discussed uh, before this. For computer-based uh, system, okay, uh, there are two types of system, batch system and real-time system. Remember that I mentioned about the batch system uh, before this? Yes, this is the batch system. Okay, batch system, it has time lag. Why? Because it accumulate the the transaction okay put it in the folder or in the whatever system okay and then after everything is completed 
then only okay it will process in the the whole system okay it accumulate eh kumpul 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 and then baru press enter and then update into the system okay and you ask why okay for your information okay uh when uh, when we don't have the real time system uh, last time all system are okay patch system okay uh, so we don't have like uh, uh, now real time system but for your information okay even we have a real time system the patch system is still relevant for payroll system okay why because we accumulate all the data from all departments and then the payroll will process together not individually not one by one otherwise the account is so difficult to to reconcile and so on so we 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 we, we accumulate or we we put into one folder one file or one system okay in one batch we call it and then we update into the system okay it's still relevant okay real time system is easy because everything nowadays is real time system okay a uh, real time system is trans uh, the transaction are processed as the economic event occurred meaning that if you key in something you add something you scan something the system will update okay for example sales system okay you 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 go to the cashier and then you scan the price okay when uh, the cashier scan the price everything is update real time okay the stock the sales and so on and even up to the profit how much profit uh, when uh, a single transaction is uh, occur okay that is real time system all right computer based system okay I, as, as i mentioned just now okay for information time frame okay best system it has lag lag to apa uh, 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 in english we call it in malay we call it ada masa lah ada what we call um masa yang diambil untuk update benda tu okay uh, so it takes some time okay Be, uh, between the occurrence of the event and the recording of the events okay lag time exists between uh, between the economic event occurs and when it is recorded but for real time processing take place when the academic economic event occurred okay once it entered it scan it whatever <laughs> okay the system will update all right resources hardware programming and training for best system fewer resources required okay but for real time uh, system more uh, what sophisticated system or resources are needed why for example in the post system yeah point of sales cashier yeah uh, they need a scanner they need a good computer a good network ah uh, so that uh, the real time system will be possible operational efficiency okay for batch system certain record are processed after the event to avoid operational delay operational delay but for real time system all record pertaining to the event are process immediately it will be more efficient in term of time all right next introduction to risk exposure okay so exposure what is risk what is exposure okay if you don't uh, don't know the definition of this you can pause and then you can google what is the definition of risk and what the uh, definition of exposure and what is the definition of risk exposure Okay, by now you will know what is risk exposure. So, for your information, business, or oh, even in our life, we are facing with various of risk. Okay, so to reduce all this kind of risk, we need control. Okay, for example, if we ride our bicycle or motorcycle and whatnot, you need helmet. Okay, 
to control or to reduce the risk of injury. Okay, uh, so same like the department, the office, okay, to reduce the risk of people stealing your document or money or whatever, or stealing the asset and so on, you need to control. Okay, same with computer based information system. So, the absence of weaknesses of control is called an exposure. Okay, weakness. Alright. Some people, okay, they write down the password and stick on the screen, monitor, computer monitor. Everybody can see, everybody can assess the system with that password. And that is weak of control okay it exposed the system to the risk risk of what loss of data data can get be uh, uh, can be uh, adjusted and so on okay so exposure is are uh, illustrated as hole in the control shield increase the firm risk to financially loss or injury from undesirable event like i mentioned like i mentioned just now a weakness in internal control may expose the firm to the types of risk such as theft. Yeah, theft. People can steal your information. Nowadays, information is more valuable than gold. So what if uh, 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 the competitors or whoever steal the information? Okay, you have all types of information such, such as your cost information and uh, recipes and so on. What not okay this you must protect okay so research as theft of asset and disruption of information system some yeah some uh, intruder they, they 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 don't want to steal anything but they want to damage our system uh, this can uh, can come from the disgruntled employee uh, employee tak hati and then uh, they try to uh, 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 destroy our system and so on. So we ma we must protect from from that kind of activities. Okay, risk exposure rise from internal sources such as employee as well as external sources such as computer hackers, cracker, and so on. Okay, example of risk exposure by the internal sources: manager and accountant who have access to record and uh, and financial reports often have authority to approve transaction. Okay, so approve transaction. Uh, from that, uh, there about there will be embezzlement and so on. Okay, uh, the clerk. Okay, uh, the operation of uh, employee also, if they have access, they can do whatever they want. Okay, computer programmer. Okay, uh, you might remember the Aman Shah case. Okay. If you don't know the Aman Shah case, you can, um, you can what we call that, uh, pause this video and then uh, have a look. Okay. Um, in Aman Shah case, he steals, I think one cent per transaction. Okay. Ah, uh, so the, I don't want to 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 explain. You can Google and find the Aman Shah. Case is very famous in our history, in Malaysian history especially. Okay, external sources, competitors, customer, supplier, outside person, and also the act of nature can also give risk exposure to our computer-based information system. Okay, risk um the nature such as flood, fire, breakdown, and so on. So how to protect this? Okay. We need internal control. Internal control is the plan, organization, and method of business used to safeguard asset, provide accurate and reliable information, promote and improve operational efficiency, and encourage adherence to prescribed managerial policy. It means that is a well-planned method, yeah, to protect the the whatever asset that the organization possess. Okay, so. For example, if you want to protect a building, what you do? You have a fence, security guard, lock, and so on. Okay, same 
for CBIS, okay, or Computer Based Information System. If you want, want to protect the system, the integrity of the system, you have what? Firewall. You have what? You have, of course, the uh, the uh, campus key, huh? the virus protection um, software. Okay, you have control like password and so on. Okay, uh, and other than that. Okay, I think this uh, simple explanation can uh, can guide you in studying the the material that we have. Okay, thank you very much. I hope if you have any question, uh, I hope that you can ask me if you have any question. Okay, have a nice weekend. See you next week. Bye.